welcome to episode 50 of All About Fitness. Have you ever wondered how personal trainers are trained? I mean, just because they're wearing a shirt that says trainer on the back, does that mean they're qualified to give you a workout that can best fit your needs? Have you ever asked personal trainers their credentials, their education, their background? Or one of my favorite questions that I like to ask, you know, what have you done lately for your continuing education? Well, today on All About Fitness, I sit down with Matt Behrens. Matt is a director of the EFTI, which is the Equinox Fitness Training Institute, meaning he's the director of fitness education for Equinox, one of the premium health clubs in the industry. I myself have been the director of fitness education. As I mentioned in today's interview, I was the director of education for a company called the Sports Club LA, which actually Equinox bought a couple years ago. As a director of education, you're responsible for educating the staff, obviously, so they can deliver a high level and a high quality of service to the members. Now, this is a very small group of individuals. Not many health clubs have somebody in that role. It's only the health clubs that really value creating extraordinary service for their members. Most health club companies may have somebody that, that is in charge of some education, but maybe all they're, they're only doing is scheduling workshops. They schedule continuing education workshops, or maybe they send out a few online articles or links to a couple of online education sites. But Equinox has a very in-depth and extensive education program. As Matt describes it today, you're going to be a little bit surprised. I mean, I, I teach exercise science at the college level, uh, community college, but still college level. <laughs> Got to be a little self-deprecating there. I teach exercise science at the, at the college level, and Equinox really does have one of the best curriculum I've seen in the industry for upskilling their staff. They also have a very specific leveling program, so their trainers are constantly challenged to learn more. So during our conversation today, Matt and I talk about the, what it takes to be an Equinox trainer, how the trainers are educated, and most importantly, and this is why I'm interviewing Matt, what that means to you, the fitness consumer. Because one of the reasons why, why I want to speak with Matt is if you're working with a trainer, you should, have an ex, you should know what your trainer's background is. At the very least, you should know how your trainer is educated. Don't just take it for granted because your trainer looks great. She or he might look awesome. They might be lean and ripped. But really, what do they know about exercise? Because as we talk about, exercise is stress applied to the body. If that stress is applied incorrectly, it can have serious devastating consequences, including being fatal. And that's not to scare you, but to understand it really takes a lot to be a good trainer, not just looking great, but it also takes knowing how the body adapts to exercise. Well, that's what we talk about today. So join me for the conversation with Matt Barrens, Director of Education for Equinox Health Clubs. Vicor Fitness is the maker of the new TerraCore, which is a step, bench, balance trainer, and multifaceted exercise tool combined into one single platform. Go to vicorefitness.com to see the newest piece of equipment that will be taking the fitness industry by storm in 2017. Use the code AAF to save 20% on purchasing a TerraCore of your own. TerraCore by Vicor Fitness. Vicor Fitness. Better results from better products. Active Motion Bar is the first resistance training bar where 30% of the weight is a moving mass. An Active Motion Bar can help you strengthen your fascia and elastic connective tissue as well as your muscle, which is important for staying injury-free during the aging process. Research has found that exercising with an active motion bar can be up to 170% more effective than using traditional weighted bars. Active Motion Bar. Let the resistance move you. www.activmotionbar.com Here today with Matt Barron. Matt, what is your title and what exactly do you do for Equinox? Oh, well, I'm the director of education for the Equinox Fitness Training Institute, which that last piece is a, is a bit of a mouthful, so we just call it EFTI. Um, and essentially, my my role is to be the kind of the content lead for all the education we provide to our trainers. And to a certain degree, we're we're starting to expand that a bit now to some of the other departments within our clubs. So. You know, helping out with Pilates and spa um, and just kind of supporting them and anything we can do for education. 
And with with Equinox, I mean, Equinox is 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 a growing company. How much have you grown in the last few years? And, and what are you guys what are you guys doing for the future? Uh, EFTI in particular has has grown quite a bit. Um, we've expanded our our reach in terms of the the subject matter we touch on, the the content we the content we teach our, our trainers. Um, you know, we. we have grown to almost double the size of our curriculum and doubled the, the amount of, of workshops we deliver to our trainers. Um, I mean, we have to keep pace with, with the company uh, as we add more, more clubs and more teams. Um, it just requires that, you know, we, we support those teams and all the, tr- you know, support the training that they're going to provide to our members, which kind of really runs the gamut depending upon where you're at. Um, so it, it's grown quite a bit and, and, you know, we've gone from having a team of say, you know, 50 some odd master instructors to now over, you know, uh, 120 master instructors, and and really we don't see any stop in the growth. We're we're going to constantly keep pushing the pushing the envelope on what we do. And and so with the EFTI, do all trainers who work for the company do they have to go through the EFTI process? And how does that work? Uh, they do. Uh, so it, so just kind of backstepping a little bit, going I guess answering the the second question first. Um, you know, EFTI is our umbrella department for all the education we provide to our, to our trainers, and a major piece of that is what we refer to as our, our internal curriculum or our, our tier-based curriculum. Um, and so what that's designed to do is really, you know, take somebody from their first day, you know, this could be their, their first ever job as a, as a trainer, or they may have had a, a couple years of experience as a trainer, and take them and, and really try to uh, – deliver education that, that makes them even better uh, at what they do. Um, so if they have experience, we're, we're just, you know, trying to help them take, a, take it to the next level. If this is their first, first step in the, the training career, we, we want to make sure we're, we're ushering them into the, the fitness profession, uh, you know, in the right way and with the, with the right information. Um, so in that respect, you know, all of our trainers, as they come into the, into the company, uh, they go through EFTI and they go through our, our curriculum, and basically it's you know it's set up on a on a rolling schedule and, and you know whenever the next round comes up they they enroll and we we start the process and then it goes depending upon what level you're going through because it's also how they progress in their career so we we focus our our trainers uh, you know career progression more so on the their improvement in education versus solely on, on a business metric. We want to make sure that if, if they're going to get promoted, it's because they have a, a greater skill set. Um, so, you know, the trainer will start off in, in our uh, Tier 2 curriculum, go through that. That's essentially a three-month uh, three month process, uh, just north of 70 hours total, um, both online and live content. And then uh, the next step will go through the, the Tier 3 curriculum, the Tier 3 plus to, to Tier X. And these are all our different levels of, of of trainer and coach within within our, our personal training department. All right, yeah, I want to come back to the levels in just a second. What, did you start as a trainer with the company? What's what's your background? How did you evolve into this role? So so I did. Uh, I mean, my background is, I I received my de, my degree in nutritional sciences with an emphasis in exercise physiology from University of Missouri, and you know that was my my starting point. I you know well, I guess my original starting point was uh, my brothers threatening me into to lifting weights, and that just kind of <laughs> Uh, you know, mushroomed from there to to where I, I decided it, it made sense to make it into a, a career as well. Um, but I, I've just always I've, I've lived in the gym, and I, I had an affinity for for trying to help others and teach others on how to get the most out of their their experience coming to a, a fitness facility. And so ultimately, when I moved to Los Angeles, I. I you know, I went went around, and by by luck, you know, by as chance would have it, uh, I was hired on by Equinox as a trainer, and I, I just started my career from there. And I've been with been with Equinox now for going on 13 years. So, um, yeah, I, I went through EFTI just as as everybody else did, uh, and I I now just get the, I get the honor of of being the person that that helps drive that ship forward even further. That's and did you go to school when you went to school for uh, exercise and nutrition sciences? Did you know you wanted to be a personal trainer? Uh, yeah, oddly enough, I did. Um, I, I'm one of those rare uh, instances. I, I kind of knew what I wanted to do, so I went to school, you know, for the, in the, within a, a related field, as we call it. And you know, my goal is either to be a personal trainer or a strength coach. Um, I think every every trainer, when they get into the industry, they they have that 
their eye on being a strength coach, but I, you know, working with athletes and, and being in that world. Um, but as I progressed, I, I really evolved into, to, you know, loving working with, you know, our, our, our members. And, you know, I, I, I'll use the word, you know, general population, you know, non, non-athletes, but that isn't even accurate because, you know, when we look at, at our, our members, you know, if for nothing else, we, just, we refer to them as lifestyle athletes. You know, they, you know, their their challenge of being performing at a higher level is, is likely harder than the average athletes because they have to balance not only, you know, the physical side of things, but everything else that comes in between, like work, family, and whatnot. So, you know, yeah, for me, I, I, I always knew I wanted to be in this profession. It's just, you know, as the, the years progressed, I, I narrowed my focus and narrowed my, my uh, attention to, to really loving the, the personal training side of things. And, and let's come back to the lifestyle athlete for a second, because um, this has been one common theme of, of my podcast, is that is that people out there, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're a general fitness consumer, you really should be trained like an athlete. And just so you know, Matt, um, in a previous podcast with Mike Boyle, Mike and I talked about this quite a bit, about why, um, why, why the regular person should be trained like an athlete. So let me ask you this. What does training like an athlete mean, and how do, how do the Equinox trainers, how do they facilitate that in your facilities? Well, I mean, you can, I can answer that in a, in a couple of different ways. I mean, training like an athlete, one, starts off with a dr- uh, kind of coming to your program like an athlete would come to their program. Um, and no matter what, what it is, it's, it's defining what your, what your goal is going to be for, for the work that you're going to put in. Um, I think that's one of the, the challenges that, that tends to arise with, with an athlete there. Yeah, and I, I'm going to steal now from from Dan John. He calls it, you know, he's, you know, talks about finding your point A and your point B. Um, you know, with with an athlete, their point B is clear. They want to win the championship. They want to, you know, get faster, stronger, whatever the case may be. For for the the general uh, fitness consumer, the the average member of one of our clubs, that point B tends to be a little murkier. Um, and I think, you know, to train like an athlete and to be that the, the lifestyle athlete, it really is, you know, looking at yourself and saying, you know, what is my point B? Where do I want to go? Um, and then the trainers, you know, assist in defining where your point A is. You know, we can we can help you see this is where you're at, and you know, our goal is to collaborate with you, collaborate with you on how do we get you to your point B? You know, and that's now in in the the programs that we design, and that's the the other fundamental piece of being a, a lifestyle athlete. There's there's no reason, just to, to a certain extent, but there's no reason you, you know, anybody can't do the same exercises, you know, when it comes to the actual programming that the average athlete does in their strength and conditioning world. You know, it, we all, you know, you know, we're all human beings. We all have access to to move in certain ways. Um, you know, I think with the the lifestyle athlete, it, it becomes even more challenging and, and even more necessary to take that. That almost that professional athlete mentality, because you have to now own, uh, you know, on your own, not having a team of people there for you, uh, maybe just you know a trainer, but you have to own your your old program both in the gym and out of the gym. Um, you got to own what you're eating, your recovery, and it's you know really understanding these these components allows you to perform at your highest level and you know ultimately reach whatever goal whatever goal you might want to want to accomplish. And see, I think that's an, an important concept. Uh, and I started doing this when I was working with my clients when I was full time training, Matt, back in the early 2000s. Is I, I coined, you know, and it, I'm not the first one to coin it by any stretch of the imagination, but I coined, you know, I was using the phrase everyday athlete. And I'd always pose the question, I'd always pose the question to my clients, would you rather train like a bodybuilder who's just going to walk around on a stage, or would you rather train like an athlete? And why not use the same training techniques or same exercise techniques? that helps humans perform at the highest level of potential. Now, do you use that thought process in terms of achieving human potential in your education? And, and what exactly do you teach or how do you teach your trainers to achieve that? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we want, uh, I think, and I could agree, agree with everything you just said there, and I, I think the word that always comes to mind when I, when I uh, you know, think of, you know, making sure our, our clients can reach their highest potential or, or kind of striving to that, that next level uh, kind of the word that comes to mind is adaptable. I want my clients to be and our members to be adaptable. You know, whenever they reach and come up against a, a challenge or an obstacle, uh, you know, no matter where it may lie, I want them to be able to adapt and overcome and, and really, you know, find the opportunity to be successful. So, you know, taking that mindset, 
that's how we, we try to teach our trainers. Um, we cover everything from the, the fundamental sciences of the human body and, and how we move and how we respond to training, so looking at things like anatomy and, you know, physiology and kinesiology, you know, really looking at, you know, you know what makes us human beings and, and you know, physical beings. Um, and then we take that to the next step further and we look at, you know, how do we use training programs to affect those systems and to, to progress forward. So it, it covers everything from looking at how do you, you know, screen for, for appropriate movement, you know, where your, your current levels of ability are just in, in movement, not, not training, just human movement based. And then, you know, taking it on a stepwise approach to now, how do we use that to inform the exercises we select? How do you, you know, cue and coach those exercises and, you know, find the right entry point for somebody? Uh, and then how do you, you know, progress that further down the road and really design a program that, that touches everything from, you know, on the string floor, you know, lifting, moving, exploring a wide variety of, uh, uh, of patterns to out of the, the club and, you know, at home or in the office, how do you set up your, your lifestyle to uh, truly affect the things that are going to support the training you're doing? So, you know, what are you eating and how do you, how do you kind of take care of your body and recover? Um, so, you know, this is all woven into the curriculum where we're teaching our, our trainers, um, and it, it just gets progressively more and more in depth as they, they progress in their career. So, you know, with our younger trainers, we may be focused more solely on the kind of the basic science and the movement piece, but then as they progress in their, their education, we, we expand it more to the, the nutrition and the recovery side of things or the, the, the lifestyle coaching side of things. Um, so that way, you know, our clients can grow with our, our trainers as well. That is so powerful, man, because I, I remember being a young trainer back in the early 2000s and going to a couple of Paul Check courses, and there was stuff that Paul talked about. And, and for listeners, Paul was probably one of the first people in the commercial fitness space. Paul was talking about gluten insensitivity back in 1999. In 2000, Paul was promoting like food, local food, local source food, organic food, and, and Paul has been one of these educators in the fitness industry who is really at the forefront and, and the interesting thing is, Matt, and the reason why I mentioned this and, and kind of segue for a second is that there was stuff that Paul talked about in workshops that didn't make sense to me until like three or four years later. And then it's like all of a sudden a light bulb switched on. I'm like, oh, that's what he was talking about. So when you – I like the way you, 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 you design the curriculum for your, for your fitness staff. Do you have that experience? And is this, is this why you have the four different levels of trainers? And what are those levels? Well, yeah, yeah, in a nutshell, that's, that's exactly it. You know, it's – and, you know, I've had the, the exact same experience as you have had. And, you know, I'll go to the same content, you know, over and over again, the same, same educator or the same workshop or, or whatever the, the content may be. But because I'm a different person at that time going to the content and, you know, had a different set of experiences now, every time I revisit it, I, I learn something new because it's, I'm just looking at it through a fresh lens. Um, and that's essentially what we want our, our trainers to do. So, be it through the curriculum and how we have the, the progressive kind of development of content to where, you know, as they go from, you know, I mentioned it before, the, the kind of the tier one to, to tier two and tier two to tier three curriculum, um, you know, there, there's going to be some overlap in some of that content where we're now we get into slightly deeper avenues of the, of the information, but they're able to now look at it from a, a, a different base, from a different level of experience. Um, and so, that that's essentially what we want our, our trainers to have. So we try to give them everything right up front. It's like, you know, the, the, the proverbial drinking from fire hose. We, we don't want to overwhelm them. We want to make sure they can, you know, digest and process and turn that into to usable information, you know, for their members and their clients. Um, so with regards to our, our, our tier system, you know, we have uh, essentially five tiers of, of trainers. Um, the, the top tier, we actually refer to them as, as, as coaches. Uh, I'll get to that in a second, but we have essentially five tiers of trainers. Um, so our, our newest trainers are tier ones. Um, everybody that comes into the into Equinox is a certified trainer, so they, they have to come in with that, that base information. Um, and then through the curriculum, uh, and we, you know, the first one they'll, they'll enter in is tier two curriculum, we, we teach them the basics of science and, and programming and, and uh, you know, really heavily focus on movement with some elements of nutrition and regen in there as well. Um, we teach them those basics, and that's their avenue to go from, from Tier 1 to Tier 2. And, and as a Tier 2 trainer, 
you know, they're more readily equipped to, to deal with a, a wider variety of clientele. They're, they're able to design those customized programs and really, you know, focus in on what the, that client may want to accomplish. Um, you know, once they're at that level, we, we want them to have some experience, want them to go through and, and you know, work with, get, get the reps under their belt, so to speak, uh, and then they enter in the, into the Tier 3 curriculum, or what we, we currently call, we're in the process of even updating this. We will always want to evolve what we're, what we're providing to our trainers, um, but what we call detailed sciences and, and musculoskeletal pathologies. It's two, two pieces of that, that curriculum, and, and really what that's focused on is you know, what are some of the, the more higher-level sciences that underlie how we move, um, what are the next-level programming and, and moving movement strategies uh, laced in with even more nutrition and regen, um, and then focus a, a bit even more so on now orthopedic issues. And our goal is not to make our uh, our trainers physical therapists. You know that's not their scope. But we want we know our our members and our, our clients are going to come in and they're going to have aches and pains and, and some common injuries that that just you know they come up from being you know an active individual. We want them to we want our trainers to be well equipped on how to work with that person as well as collaborate with their medical professional if. if that person's involved, like a physical therapist or a chiropractor, we want our, our trainers to have that, those tools to have those kind of expand the team of, of what uh, the client is working with. Um, so that's the, the focus of, of Tier 3. And then, you know, we, we continue down that path where Tier 3 Plus is our, our nutrition coaching program where, you know, pretty much their, their entire education is focused on, you know, how do you coach and help somebody improve their, their eating habits and their nutrition. And we, we've uh, aligned heavily with Preci uh, Precision Nutrition and, and John Berardi and, and really, um, you know, focusing on, you know, because we see them as the gold standard essentially in nutrition coaching, how we can bring that to our clients. Uh, and then the last piece, uh, I know this is a, a long map of, of progression for our trainers, uh, but the last one is our Tier X coaches. And, and really, the, we, we kind of refer to them as the, the, the tip of the spear, the pinnacle of what our our trainers can become, because they become our our, our true lifestyle coach. They they look to do their education to impact anything they can within that client, be it the movement side or the or the nutrition or the regeneration, and really just bring it into a very holistic approach, and really take a proactive approach in health management as well. You know, how can they work? Not wait for an injury to pop up or something to happen. But how can they take that step forward and, and you know ensure that they're they're setting the clients the clients up for success in all realms for the long run? Now, and I think it's so cool to see that because when I was the director of education uh, with the Sports Club LA about ten years ago, that was one of my objectives when I came in and assumed that role in, in 2006 was I wanted to evolve our trainers to, to two levels. We had two levels. I inherited two levels of trainers in that position, and the first level I wanted to kind of be conditioning specialist. And the second level, I wanted to be health coaches, and I was looking for a curriculum to implement. And it was kind of interesting at the time that it was funny. Some of the trainers gave me pushback because they didn't really understand it, while other trainers were really interested in, in having that opportunity. And I, the challenge is we only had six clubs. I wasn't really given the resources to try to implement that in a full scale. So it was exciting to see you do that. And the, the reason why I'm, I'm giving this a little bit of background because I do believe – that's the per, that's the future of where we're going with personal training. That we are going to evolve into coaches. How have your members adapted to that, or how have your members responded to this approach? I mean, I think it's I think it can be a little bit um, it's, it, it exceeds the expectation, or it totally changes perception of what a trainer does. So, are the members enjoying working with the TRX health coaches? They they are, um, and, and it's been a it's been a growing process. You know, I was a TRX TRX coach myself um, for, and I still am. I, I still uh, work with a couple of clients, um, but I was a TRX coach myself for um, shoot going on uh, eight and some odd years prior to taking on the role as, as director of education. Um, and it, it it's a progressive approach because we have to. There's a certain expectation of what a you know a personal trainer does, um, both as you described in, in the mind of the personal trainer, but also in the mind of the member and the client. And you know for us to just kind of throw everything at them all at once and, and say this is now what we're going to do. It, it doesn't it doesn't help with the adoption of it and kind of the acceptance of it. So it was a slow process, but you know it, it, the program has developed so much so over the the last couple of years, um, and, and really has has 
been very, very well accepted by both our members and our trainers, but also a lot of the medical professionals that we work with because they, they like the fact that we are engaging them in a, a thoughtful conversation around how we can help their patients and, and their people. You know, we're, we reassure them that we're not there to, um, to you know, overstep our bounds and be out of our, our scope of practice. We, we know where we, we live, but we're also we're professionals that are working with these clients two, three, sometimes five times a week. That's, that's a lot of touch points that we can do to, to really help you know, improve and impact somebody's health. Um, and, you know, as I'm talking about this, one of the things I want to, I want to call out is, you know, uh, the TRX program has, has, you know, I've been lucky enough to, to be a part of it and, and support it. And in, as the director of education um, for EFTI, I'm, I'm able to, to support even further in terms of the content development. But really a lot of the progression of that, that program has been under the, the guidance of Alex Zimmerman, our, our director of TRX. Um, he's helped grow this program, and I've had the had the benefit of, of being a friend and colleague of his for, you know, I, I guess going on almost, uh, you know, 10, 12, 10, 11 years now. But you know, helping him you know, and developing the program, but he's taken taken it a long way to really bring it to the level where it's at now. And I think I'll probably I'll probably reach out to him at a different point and, and schedule a different <laughs> a different call with him. Do you think do you, this kind of begs the question? I mean, and not to go into a political discussion um, because that's a whole, whole can of worms. But but we know, with the state of the healthcare being as it is in, in the country right now, do you see the do you see like personal trainers and health coaches playing an integral role in in the healthcare continuum, and and how so? I do um, because the, because like I said previously, you know, we have a lot of interaction and, and impact on, on what our clients do. And I think we're, honestly, I think we play the role of being that, um, you know, the, the daily application of really what the medical professional wants their patients to, to do. Because, the, the, you know, an average person is going to see their doctor, you know, a handful of times a year at, at most. And really what we can be is that, that person that, you know, sees and, and works with their, their medical team, you know, if they, whoever the, the, the member's working with, and can kind of be that day-to-day, uh, you know, operations or day-to-day application of, of those, those healthy habits. Um, you know, and it's really looking at how we can help the, the client own those healthy habits, you know, as opposed to saying, you know, here, do this. You know, we can, we can give them the tools to figure out how to navigate any, any challenges that they, they come across themselves, be it, you know, with regards to their training or with regards to their nutrition or, or their stress management. Um, again, it, 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 we, we, you know, live in this, this arena of, you know, being able to, to provide that, that guidance, you know, to, to the, the clients and the members, you know, in an area where, you know, they're the, they're the experts on their body. We're, you know, they know what they're feeling, and, and we're just kind of here to help shine a light on what that might mean and, and how we can, you know, turn it into a different direction. But that's always in collaboration with their, their medical professional because it's, you know, the larger our team grows in supporting them, you know, taking it back to the lifestyle athlete, you, you look at, you know, you know, professional football players, basketball players, think how big their team is in terms of, um, you know, getting the best level of performance. They have their, their strength conditioning coach, their physical therapist, their, you know, you know, general practitioner, their nutritionist, all these, you know, these different people are on their team. There's no reason why a, the, you know, average gym goer shouldn't have the same. They may not need the, 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 you know, day-to-day touch point from, from the physical therapist or the day-to-day touch point from the nutritionist, but they need those people there to, to support them in their, in their goals. Okay, we're getting uh, running up on time here, so one or two more questions I want to cover. You've mentioned a couple of things, movement, nutrition, and regeneration. You've mentioned that a few times. What are those, and, and uh, how do you incorporate them into your overall program? Because cause you and I, I think we talk, we, we're so used to that that sometimes we forget that somebody listening to the conversation might not understand what those are. So what, what is the MNR approach to, to programming? Absolutely, yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. We I tend to it, – it's now become so so common. I, I, I tend to just throw the words out there and don't even think about um, – that they're probably not the most common vernacular being used uh, in in the general you know fitness facility. So basically, M and R or move nutrition and regeneration. That's the the kind of three pillar approach or the 
the, the philosophy we take to a holistic program with our, our members. Um, and really what it is, is is acknowledging that in order to have a balanced program, you need to have attention to each of those pieces of the program. Um, so the, the most common one, the one that, that uh, people are the most familiar with is, is movement. And that's really, you know, it's a broad term. You know, it's, you know, movement, you know, can mean a lot of different things, but we intentionally went with that broad term because we don't really see it necessary to lock anybody into to any one way of training. You know, you can come in and movement can be, you know, you know, running or weightlifting or yoga or body weight training. It, it really, and our, you know, mindset is that we, we look at what movement is best for, for you and where you're at and your abilities, but also what movement do you want to get into and explore, you know, you know, it's the, I, I, I'm blanking on the exact phrase that's used, but it's, you know, it, you know, it's the idea that, you know, taking your body or working with your body in, in, in training is a, is a gift, not a punishment. And, you know, the, the gift is everything that you can get into, all the, the different movements that you can do. So that's really what moving is. That's in a nutshell training. Um, nutrition is, you know, exactly as it sounds. It's taking a look at what, what you're eating and you know, how that impacts everything you do from the movement and the re regeneration side of things. Um, and so from our end, our primary focus, we're, we're, you know, we're not, you know, dietitians. We're, uh, you know, we're, we're focused on giving the, the member and the client the tools to make good choices for themselves. So we focus on habit-based coaching. Um, so that's looking at how do you, you know, how do you make the right choices? What are your decision, what's your decision-making process? And, and really it is, you know, a, truly a collaboration with the, the member and the client on finding where the, the you know, biggest area of opportunity in improving eating habits. And it really comes back down to that, those day-to-day -day actions or those habits that you're, you're doing. And then uh, the last piece would be regeneration. And I think this one is the kind of the newest or the, the, the piece of the, the puzzle that's starting to get the most amount of attention now. Uh, and it's really focused on how do you you know, take care of yourself now in the kind of the low threshold mindset. How do you recover from training? Um, how do you, you know, manage your stress? How do you make sure that not only do you, you know, kind of find the limits of what you can do, but spend time in, you know, dialing it back and, and really, you know, taking care of your body. And, and, you know, that could be through things like, you know, um, targeted days off or massage or, uh, you know, you know, finding ways to, to manage your day to, to alleviate the stress or, or incorporating, you know, different areas of movement to help allevi alleviate your stress. Um, you know, it really, again, it's a broad term to really just ask what can you do to really, you know, take care of yourself in that approach. So, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a, a long-winded way to say, you know, m and is our kind of our, our three pieces to the whole you know, holistic puzzle of how you kind of be that lifestyle athlete and reach your, your highest level of potential. Well, and I think that that's one thing that, that a lot of people overlook is, and I'll ask you one more question after this, a lot of people overlook is, is the recovery aspect because exercise, you've mentioned stress a few times, exercise is when we put stress into the body. It's what we do after exercise that really determines the the adaptations that occur and I've been teaching since 2011. I've been teaching a workshop um, called, you know, Recovery, the Forgotten Variable. And it's been interesting that, that when I started that, there really wasn't much. I found a few research studies on it, but in the last five or six years, as I've updated the workshop, there's been a tremendous and explosive growth of information and resources available for that. So it's been it's been good to see that because that's one of the secrets of top performance athletes. Mm -hmm. It's not what they do during training; it's what they do after training to allow their body to allow their body to to, to adapt. Do you think that's one of the missing pieces in most, most fitness uh, programs that, of the average consumer? 100%. I, I, w I would take it even further. I'd say the average consumer and the average fitness professional, you know, I, I think it's, it's for the longest time kind of recovery and regeneration has been thought of as, oh, that's the time in between my training sessions. You know, hey, it's, just, it's been left to this very nebulous, you know, undefined, Oh, that's just when I'm not working out, and that's the that's you know yeah, at best defined by a period of time. But it you know exactly as you called out, it, it's becoming more and more evident you know for everybody, no matter what your goal is, 
that you in, you know, spend some time really taking a focused approach to your regeneration. And it, and it doesn't have to be a, a lot of work, but it is, you know, seeing, okay, I'm going to map out when I'm going to, you know, how long I'm going to recover, when I'm going to take my days off, and or what other methods I can use to, to support, you know, my body's ability to rebound and exactly as you, you called it out, adapt to the stresses that I'm putting it through. Because um, that's the, you know, exactly as, you, as you, you said, that's the piece that I think a lot of people tend to neglect is that the body recognizes stress as stress. It doesn't matter the source. You know, stress can be from having a real bad day at work and getting chewed out by your boss. Stress can be from doing sprints on the treadmill or a heavy deadlift or staying out late with your friends because it was somebody's birthday party. Regardless of what the source, positive or negative, the body just sees, okay, this is stress and it, it you know, and it, you know, drained my bucket, so to speak. You know, it, it took from my reserves, and now I got to find a way to to add back to it. I got to, you know, it's a, it's that proverbial give and take, um, and that's where, you know, if you, well, I, I think if you want to take a first step, honestly, in in owning your regeneration, you take a look at what you're doing for training, and and higher that, the more you're asking your body, the more you have to give back to it. So you you try to match and mirror, and you say, you know, where. Do, what am I doing now, and what can I do to support it outside of, you know, adding more stress to the to the the pile, so to speak? And that's an important thing because I don't think people realize. I don't think people understand how serious exercise can affect the body. And, and you and I have probably both known a number of people who have had serious health issues as a result of overtraining and, and too much exercise. So it's something that that people should really take a look at. Look at it's like yes, exercise is good, but too much of it is not so yeah. much. Now, for the final question, let's kind of go, kind of segue just a little bit here. What, what's, what, you and I are both fans of kind of like the concept of physical culture and just kind of what's that mean to you and how does that influence your approach to fitness? I, to me, physical culture means exploration. It, you know, it means, you know, getting into, you know, whatever form or, or style of, of, and I use the word training, but I, I don't even, I think that, that, that has a, a connotation that I don't want to apply here. It, it's getting into a form of um, moving with intention that that allows you to to learn either a new skill or get better at doing something or, or improve improve some quality in which you you want to get better. And that, and that could be strength, it could be you know you know power, whatever the case may be. But to me, physical culture is really exploring all the avenues that your your body has available to it. Um, and not just getting getting locked into one thing, uh, you know, But again, that, that's a that's a broad that that paints a broad stroke there. So you're you I think with physical culture, you know, you know, it just becomes you know what what do you enjoy in training, I guess, and, and really what can you do to to really you know up level your your ability to to move and. And really be, and I, I come back to this word, be adaptable uh, in, in terms of how you in, encounter obstacles and, and what you do to, to overcome them. And then, and then, final question, like with that, what is, right now, just the time we're talking, what's your favorite like workout right now? Like, what, what are you kind of digging right now in terms of, of, of working out for your own personal workouts? For my own personal workouts, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of, of working with kettlebells. It's I, I have. It's for a lot of different reasons. I, I uh, one is I have a bunch of them at home, so I, I it makes it super easy for me to stay stay consistent. Um, but two, I just like the the ability to push myself in a lot of different different areas. I can I can you know work on strength with the heavier bell. Uh, I can work on some very you know intricate skills uh, with some different you know patterns and, and and you know different types of movement that are are kind of new to me or. or, or challenging just from the movement side of things and, and learning how to do it. Or I can work on the, the power and endurance and capacity side of things where I, I can just push myself to see how far and how long I can go. And, you know, it, within the, the, the kettlebell world, it, it creates what is often called this, you know, what the hell effect where, you know, it, it has a far reaching uh, impact to any other thing I want to do. So when I go out for a hike or I go out for a run or I, I can know that the, the work I'm doing with the kettlebells can, uh, can support me and, and, and go further. I can go further with that. Um, I think the other aspect that, that I really like working with, and, and kettlebells is a part of this, but it's, you know, 
just kind of finding any new movement or any new exercise to, to play with. And I think that the overarching term I'll use that in terms of a, my favorite style of training is, is really is play, um, which is also why I do it at home so nobody you know, sees the, the, the weird stuff I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but, it, you know, it's really kind of going and, and seeing what things I can come up with that, you know, that aren't, you know, circus tricks but are, are usable styles of training but uh, force me to kind of butt up against my, my – my limitations and, and see how I can overcome those those limitations. And so that, that incorporates kettlebells, but there are some new tools out there like, you know, maces and heavy clubs and Indian clubs, you know, kind of the old school training tools uh, that allow you to kind of do some, some unique things. And, that, and that's the cool stuff. And, and you know, the, the really fun, like kind of different stuff. The final, final thought, like what, what can people expect if, if they hire, if, they, if they're a member of Equinox or they go to Equinox, and they work with a, a trainer who's gone through the FTI program. What what can they expect to, from that experience? And then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, you know, at the minimum, you can expect a, a a personalized program, something that's designed not for for everybody, but for you. Um, but along with that, what you can expect is a is a teammate, you know, a, a collaborator, somebody that's going to you know help guide you through this process and. And help you own the process on your, uh, you know, in your own right as well. Um, you know, our goal is to, you know, as trainers, and, and this goes for all of our trainers within the, within the company, is to provide you with the the right program, but also provide you with the tools to to be owners of that program as well, and, and to really, you know, know how you can take it to the next level and and really grow, you know, without us as well as with us. Um, so I think that's those are the kind of the two things that you you can expect. You know, we'll We'll be the the consummate professional and provide that program, but we want to want to see you grow and develop on your own right. And I think that's because with the, with the with the kind of explosive popularity of like internet programs of downloading programs that you, that you do. I mean, people have to realize those are cookie cutter programs that aren't tailored to your specific needs as an individual. And there's nothing like having a personal coach who understands you from the inside out providing you with that guidance and that coaching. So, Matt, man, I really appreciate your time. I look forward to seeing you soon. And uh, any any final thoughts or, or any, is there any way that people can find out more about Equinox or how to become a member or find out about working with an Equinox trainer? Um, you know, in terms of finding out more about Equinox, the easiest way to go, and it's the, uh, an easy website, is just going to, to Equinox.com. Uh, and that gives – You'll, you'll see there's a lot of different avenues to learn about our, our training program and, you know, EFTI and what we have to offer. And, you know, there'll be the – it'll also give you some information on if, you, if you're looking to join or become a member or want to find out more at least. Um, it'll give you, you know, insights to where all of our clubs are. We're, we're constantly expanding and growing. I think we're at either 88 or 89 clubs by, at this point. So there's, there's – you know, if you're in one of the major cities, there, there's likely a club somewhat, somewhat close to you. Um, and that would be an opportunity for you to come in and – you know, just check it out and, and, and see what it has to offer. Um, and then, you know, yeah, from there you can – There, we're, we're, you know, in a nutshell, we're here to, to provide whatever help or assistance we can. So if you do make your way to, a, to one of our clubs, you know, our, our training team is always there to help. They're there to answer any questions you may have. So, you know, I guess just don't be afraid to, to, to pop in and ask. We're always there to, to be of support. Matt, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Matt Barron the director of the EFTI program with Equinox Health Club. Thanks for your time, Matt. Thank you. Take care. As you can tell, Matt is a very cerebral guy. He really is very thoughtful and thinks a lot about, about exercise and about fitness. And hopefully this gives you an idea about what it takes to be a personal trainer at one of the top health club companies in the industry. I mean, that's why I wanted to speak with Matt. And first, I want to apologize. You know, I've been using, I've been trying a new uh, recording software for my phone. So I've recorded one or two of the last podcasts on the recording software. And I'm not as pleased with the audio quality as I am when I record using other devices. So I'm just playing around with it. I'm trying to find out what works. So the recording quality could have been better. Uh, so thank you for bearing with me if you're still listening. But, but back to our discussion today. You can see why I wanted you to, to hear what Matt had to say. You know, I've known people, I've known people who've worked at Equinox as trainers for years. I mean, when I was a director of education, some of my staff was as at my company for going on eight to 10 years. And a lot of that has to do is if the staff is properly engaged through education, they'll stay with the company. And if the staff is properly engaged, if the staff has a proper education, guess what? The members 
you, the, the consumer, gets the best results. Because who would you want to work with as a trainer? Somebody that looks great, that may, you know, may have you know, huge arms, may have ripped abs, may have, may have a great looking butt, may be incredibly sexy. But if they can't answer your, answer your questions about why you should be doing a certain exercise, my recommendation is your next exercise is to walk away from them. You know, when you work with, e- with trainers at Equinox, you can tell from the conversation with Matt, they're very thoughtful. They really take the time to understand what it is they're doing. And I say this from, from personal experience. I mean, just recently, within the last week, I worked with a, with a friend of mine at the Equinox where I teach fitness classes. He put me through the functional movement screen. And, you know, I paid for, paid for his services. I mean, I, I hired him just like anybody else would hire a trainer because I wanted to, it's been a while since I'd gone through the functional movement screen. And also I wanted to go through their body comp. Body comp is analyzing body fat. And it was really interesting because, I mean, he knew, he knows what I do. You know, this trainer, uh, my buddy, Josh, uh, this trainer really knows, he knows what I do for a living. It's really interesting to go through the process with him because he asked me some very thoughtful questions. He was asking me some detailed questions. But I walked away from that experience knowing that if I were just an average consumer, if I were a regular 40-something guy going into a health club, I would be in excellent hands with a trainer like Josh. Because let's face it, folks, we only have one body that has to last us through 80, 90, however many years you plan on living. I know I plan on living a long time. And so I'm not going to trust my fitness to just anybody. I certainly, absolutely will not work with a trainer just based on how they look. That has absolutely no meaning to me. I don't care. You know, a lot of appearance is genetics. Yes, some people put a lot of emphasis on diet, nutrition, and exercise, and they really do. And, and hats off to them. But being a good trainer isn't just about your appearance. Being a great trainer is about how you interact with the customer. Being a great trainer is understanding that you need to give the right person a workout for that day. You know, we're all going through stress every day, whether it's work, whether it's life stress, whether it's home stress. When you go to the gym, all you're doing is you're piling on more physical stress onto your body. A really good trainer, the best trainers will sometimes take a look and you say, you know what, today we're not going to exercise. Today, maybe we're going to stretch. Today, maybe we're going to play a little bit. Because I can tell you're really stressed right now. You didn't eat well. You haven't been sleeping well. The last thing we need to do is overload your adrenal system. Now, if you're kind of wondering what that means, understand that that's the type of experience you get with a great trainer with an extensive education. You know, the trainers at Equinox that have gone up to level three or the TRX have that education. And as a consumer, that's what you deserve. You don't want to trust yourself. And, and I say this, you know, the last couple of podcasts I've done have been about training certifications. And I've been speaking with people behind the scenes at Equinox. But I did that for a reason because I want to make you more aware about the education process, about what it takes to be a trainer. I teach in a one-year program that, that's basically a vocational program at a community college. But in our program, we teach trainers how to be good trainers, meaning how to understand to apply the right exercise for an individual. So that's the reason why why, I wanted to interview Matt. That's the reason why I interviewed David Harris on Podcast 49 is because I wanted you to understand what really goes into the education process and what goes into the thought process of being a great trainer. It's not just how you look, but it's understanding all the different ways that the body adapts to exercise. Guess what, folks? change or adaptation to exercise starts at the cellular level and works the way up. If you're working with somebody that does not understand that, you're not going to get the best experience for your needs. Now, here's the thing. If you want to find a good qualified personal trainer, I already gave this in the, in the other podcast on certifications. You can go to the American Council on Exercise. They have a personal trainer locator. The National Academy of Sports Medicine has a personal trainer locator on it. And the National Strength and Conditioning the National Strength and Conditioning Association. I always run those words together. That's the NSCA, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, has a personal trainer locator on it. A certified trainer, a trainer certified with a national certification, like the three I just mentioned, is a bare minimum of where you should start with a personal trainer. At the very, you know, at the very least, they should have a national certification. Hopefully, they have a degree. Maybe they, they're like me and some other folks in the business. They have a master's degree. But really, you want to understand that the trainer has the education to give you a workout that you need and can adjust it to your skills. I know that's a lot of information, but I'm trying to put it out there so as consumers, you understand how to get the best fitness services for your needs. As always, if you have any questions or comments, or if you work for a health club and you want to schedule somebody from your staff to talk with me about this issue, I would love to have them on. You can reach me at Pete at PeteMcCallFitness.com. 
Again, my email is Pete at PeteMcCallFitness.com. My Twitter handle is PeteMC underscore fitness. And on Instagram, you can find me at Pete McCall underscore fitness. Thanks for stopping in. And until next time, stay active.